Good Wednesday morning, everybody. Live, make certain the microphone's on here, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. We again have a pretty quiet start to the day. And as of right now, so far so good for the Mid-South for midweek and into the rest of the week. We're going to be seeing again the possibility of some pretty dry conditions into this weekend for the area. Could be again the possibility of some more showers heading our direction. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. If you've never joined us before, welcome to the show. This is our exclusive video weather blog called Weather Overtime. This is where we try to present you with sort of a video blog format, magazine style, if you will. Again, giving you an idea as to what's going on with the forecast into the course of the next couple of days. And we'll update you on the 7 to 10 day forecast coming up here in just a little bit. We'll also tell you a little bit more about where we're going to be seeing the possibility of maybe some colder weather coming back into the forecast, as in maybe another Arctic blast heading our way. We'll talk Talk about that and we'll also give you an idea as to what we're looking for when it comes to severe weather potential and what you can do about it. There's going to be new chances out there for getting trained for severe weather, what to look for before, during, and after severe weather hits, and we'll talk more about what you can do to get more information about that coming up here in just a little bit, so stick around for that. Currently in the Mid-South area, again, it's pretty chilly. We've got temperatures back in the 30s and 20s for the most part. Should be rising into the lower 40s as we head into later on this morning and getting to about the mid to upper 40s. 40s as we get into around lunchtime, early afternoon. The kids will not need any rain protection going to or from school today, so no mad dashes from the bus to the school or from the school to the car rider line, so that's good news. So you can leave the umbrella at home. Windshield wipers will not be necessary into the rest of today either, so good news on that. We'll be a bit on the brisk side for this morning, but temperatures should be back into around the mid to upper 40s by lunchtime, and that's pretty typical for this time of the year. Our high temperatures today expected to be back in the mid to upper 40s to around about the lower 50s. So again, not exactly as warm as it was a couple of days ago, but also not the ice box that we saw a few days ago either. Is that going to hold out into the next week and the end of January? Well, Stay tuned for more on that. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. If you're checking in this morning, see Patricia Diane Parker Roberts. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. No more cold weather. Can't guarantee anything, but thank you very much for checking on in. Gosnell, Arkansas, Kirk Downing, welcome to the show, and thanks for joining us. If you've got a weather report from your area, drop your location and your weather report, temperature, wind speed, wind direction. You've got that thermometer outside the kitchen window. Put that to good use, and let's see what it looks like in and around your particular area. View of Germantown into around the area of Poplar Pike, the roadway right along the railroad tracks there. Germantown Parkway and the towers of East Memphis. Kind of hazy out there. The pollution in the atmosphere when the nighttime happens, the pollution kind of settles down. You can kind of see that thick band right there. That's the pollution that we all cause to drive around and work in the Mid-South area, settling down into that thick haze layer that we see from time to time. But otherwise, decent visibility and that pink line on the horizon, that's the belt of Venus, happens opposite sunrise or sunset, so a good view of some atmospheric optics for this morning. Mid to upper 20s, winds occasionally breezy, so heading to school at Germantown High School right across the street from these water towers, going to be back into the mid to upper 20s for the time being. Great view of sunrise, spectacular from downtown Memphis as the sun heads over the horizon. Peabody Hotel with the Duck Palace down that direction and again getting ready to get the ducks out in about another four hours or so. So it should be some good weather for that if you're heading down to watch them watch waddle across into the lobby later on today. Fair skies, meaning no clouds below 12,000 feet, calm winds and no delays to report at Memphis International Airport, Tower Terminal, Parking Garage, and I-240 and Airways traffic moving along pretty well at this point in time. So again, looking pretty good. Chicago O'Hare is seeing some delays due to snow and ice, assuming that's what's left over from a couple of days ago from that last storm system, but nothing really majorly active going up around Chicago at this point. And good news, that's about the only delay we have to report from the FAA at this time. Riley, Mel Riley Mason, from Memphis. If I had more coffee, I could talk better. Apologies on that. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Sheila Williams, thank you very much. Welcome to the show. Lynn Williamson, I think you win for the longest away viewer, the United Arab Emirates. What's the weather like over on that side of the globe? Thanks for joining us for this morning. Batesville, Maryland, where? Uh, Elsie Jameson, my kind of weather. You're quite welcome on that. Thank you very much. Crystal Cackler from Lakeland. And thanks to everybody else for joining us for early this morning. Again, if you're just checking in, 
Let's see your weather reports out there. If you got that thermometer outside the living room window, let's see what it looks like. And if you got that weather station, dial it up and give us a shot of that and see what it looks like out there for this morning. Storm Tracker 3S radar, nothing to show you in the way of precipitation. Very dry, complete and total clean sweeps across the area. Our storm system, the last one we had, the clouds off of that trailing behind here and dissipating as that drier air sweeps in from the west. Got some clouds over toward Nashville, the Tennessee Valley, East Tennessee. The storm system causing all this is way back up to the north and to the east of us and is now basically all the way almost off the North American continent, heading up into the Canadian Maritimes and taking the really cold air and any chance of anything involving snow or ice along with it. Again, checking into Chicago, a little bit of light snow possible, maybe some flurries this morning, but not seeing anything else that would cause any major delays. Now back to the west of us, again, so far this morning looking pretty quiet for right now we're going to be watching for another storm system as we head into the late part of january early part of february we'll talk more about that what we're going to be looking for coming up in just a little bit but so far things are looking pretty quiet our latest storm system here moving its way from the gulf of alaska into the west coast That'll be affecting their weather at first, and as we go toward the weekend, more possibilities of rain for us as this gets a little bit closer to us. We'll tell you more about that in the 7 to 10 day forecast in just a little bit. Amanda Biggs from Arlington, welcome to the, sh to the show this morning. Uh, Vera Davis, snow the weekend of the 3rd, say it ain't so. Sorry, I can't do that, but uh, thank you for asking anyway. Uh, Denise Thomas, likewise, hope you have a good day as well. Good morning from Horn Lake, Megan Walker Foster, thank you very much. 72, Len Williamson and sunny skies in the United Arab Emirates. Well, it's definitely a far cry from what we're getting here for today. So again, nothing what we're seeing in the way of temperatures for right now on live real-time WeatherNet 3. Thank you, Mr. Williamson from the UAE. Hopefully the flight home when you make it that way is going to be a safe one out and around the area. So thank you very much. And where did that temperature go? 26 degrees in Corinth. Connor Stroop. Hope I'm saying that correctly. Thank you very much for that. Live real-time on your side weather showing again temperatures back into the mid to upper 20s for the most part. Bethel Springs, you're at 21 degrees right now. When we say right now, we mean right now. Within a few seconds, this is where we're seeing again the possibility of those very cold temperatures out there. You can access the weather bug system from WREG.com. All you have to do is go to this website and you'll find more details available here. So a great opportunity for you to get weather information from News Channel 3 all over the Mid-South and from thousands of other stations, not only around the country, but around the rest of the world. So a good opportunity to learn more about what goes on here. What need to mention, if you've never joined us before, and if you're, this is your first time tuning in, if you can't stick around for the whole forecast coming up, blue bar, bottom of your screen, you can see again the forecast down that direction, uh, scrolling along from right to left, and you can see a little bit more about what's going on with the forecast for the rest of the day today. Or you can check out our seven-day forecast that's also available at WREG.com slash weather. All right, running the numbers into the rest of the day. By lunchtime, temperatures should be back into around the mid to upper 40s. Dismissal time for the kids, upper 40s to lower 50s. Moving arrows on screen showing winds coming in from out of the west at about maybe 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now, the main thing about this for today, winds right off the continent, and these are going to be coming in from basically off the desert southwest, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, in that area, and this is going to be pretty dry air, so this could sap the moisture out of a lot of the vegetation out west, so we could be seeing maybe the potential of an increased wildfire danger doesn't look like it's going to be spreading too fast if anything develops, but once again, with the drier air in place, that's something we're going to have to watch here in the Mid-South, that that starts to spread into Arkansas and across the river into around Tennessee and Mississippi. So something we'll keep an eye on for that one at this point in time. See, Diane Krause, 33, in Troy, Alabama. Thank you very much uh, for that one right there. Chase Ennis, possible snow chances with the cold coming in in 10 days or so. We'll talk about that on the uh, 7 to 10-day forecast here in just a little bit. Annie L. Isabel, I hope I'm saying that right, from Walls, Mississippi. Thanks for joining us. And Ashley Hills Williams from Wynn, Arkansas. Thanks for joining us for this morning. Rest of the day, again, maximum temperatures in the upper 40s to lower 50s. And into tonight, News Channel 3 at 10 with Jim Jaggers back in the 30s. 
maybe around 40 degrees, but mainly 30s for the area. And then getting into tomorrow morning on daybreak, temperatures back into the mid to upper 30s across much of the Mid-South. 7 to 10 day forecast, running the numbers for this, lower 50s today. Again, right about where we should be for this time of the year. We're not seeing any changes in a big Arctic blast or big warm-up situation. Now, as we go into tomorrow, temperatures are going to increase. Winds turn just a bit to come out of the southwest. And that's going to bump the numbers up by just a bit. So we'll be seeing near 60 degrees as we go into tomorrow. A lot of sunshine across much of the area. Then we get into around Friday. Temperatures dip a little bit thanks to the clouds that are going to be spilling into the area. That's our next storm system coming through. Clouds arrive first and then better chances of rainfall start to make their way into the forecast as we head through about Saturday or so. This is where we see again the potential of just rainfall. So far it does not appear to be anything in the way of thunderstorms but once again we'll be watching that with a lot of interest. This is the time of the year we need to watch out for severe weather and we'll show you why that's important in just a minute or so. Stay tuned for more on that. Now, too warm for anything but rainfall Saturday into Sunday, back in the lower 40s, so just some scattered showers. And as an added bonus, this should last right up until about dawn patrol on Sunday, and then hopefully clearing skies into the rest of Sunday with more sunshine expected, but could be a soggy start to Sunday, so not the entire weekend being a complete and total washout, so that's some good news. Now, last part of January, temperatures remain pretty much on the mild side back in the lower 50s. Here's where it gets interesting. Toward next week, the end of January, the beginning part of February, I'll reserve any comments about the furry faux forecaster up there, so uh, we'll talk more about that a little bit later on, I'm certain. But in the meantime, anything around Groundhog Day, the temperature that I've chosen here, kind of a middle ground temperature for right now, very optimistic view of the forecast. We have several computer models, each one of them taking its own tangent on what's going to be happening. I've kind of treaded the area in the warmer temperatures for now, and saying about lower 40s. But there are a lot of other computer models that are saying a lot colder conditions into and around the area as we go toward Friday, January, uh, February 2nd, and afterwards going into the rest of next weekend, the first weekend of February, we could be looking at another Arctic blast heading our way. Real too early to tell about what's going to be happening. Again, the farther you go toward this end of the forecast, the more it becomes more suggestion-like than anything else. But the neat thing is, as all this changes, we'll keep you updated on this over the course of the next several days. So this looks pretty good for the weekend for chances of rainfall. Whether or not this pans out, again, 172 hours in advance, it's almost not forecasting. It's more like wish casting. So it's going to be difficult to see if that pans out for now, but there are signs that we could see some colder air. And as we were asking about that uh, just a little while ago, Chase Ennis, you were asking about possible snow chances at this time. Uh, possible, yes. Uh, snow the weekend of the third, Vera Davis, again, it's possible, but right now we're going to keep the precipitation out of the forecast for the time being for that next weekend as we just stop right around Groundhog Day on Friday the 2nd. So it'll be, looks like colder. That's a good possibility, but whether or not we get any precipitation out of this is still, again, so, still several days away. So again, keep it tuned to News Channel 3 and the weather experts, and we'll let you know if anything changes and when. Definitely want to keep up to date on this one just in case we have anything more in the way of ice or snow on approach. It doesn't look that way for now, but once again, stay tuned for more on that over the next several days. Thanks to everybody for some great pictures out there. Memphis underscore Tom. Nice view of Pauly's Island. Not too sure what that is. Let's see, onward to the UK. So wherever he was for this one, a great sunrise on that particular area. Northeast Arkansas from around the area of where Louis Haskett sends us some very nice sunrise pictures up that direction. Thank you very much for that. And a little bit behind, but a still a nice view from JLZ117 from the first week of December, sunset over the Mississippi River from downtown Memphis. Beautiful view from downtown, and thanks a lot for sending that in. No matter the date on this, this is a just spectacular view when you get views like this across there. And we would like to see these so we can show them on netcast like this and on News Channel 3 uh, updates on air. So if you have the pictures and want to send them in, we would love to have them. All you have to do is tweet them to me at aonic underscore WREG3, my own Facebook page at Austin Onic WREG, or on Instagram at aonic no underscore necessary. 
WREG3 for more information on that, or just email me again. That's in the blue box right there at austin.onic at WREG.com. Now, we are just getting into the prime season for severe weather. Late January through roughly about, say, late April, early May, somewhere in there. It, now's the time to get ready. The skies are blue, the sun is shining. Now is the time to learn what you need to do to get ready for severe weather. Waiting until severe weather happens is not the way to do things. Absolutely not the way to do things. You may have just moved to the Mid-South area. You may have never gone through a tornado warning before. So if you would like to know more, if you've got a kid at home, say like about eight years old plus, that is terrified of weather and you'd like to be able to give them a little bit more control over what to them feels like an uncontrollable situation, here's what you do. The National Weather Service, now that the shutdown is over with for the time being, it looks like we have, again, these meetings are on with no particular problem there. These meetings last about an hour, hour and a half, depends on how many questions are asked and answered by the National Weather Service meteorologists and personnel. You show up, you take the course, no registration, your tax dollars, my tax dollars all pay for these meetings and they train you to look for what goes on in storms. It is a spotter course, it is not a chase course. If you want to learn how to chase severe weather, you got to go learn from the experts and trust me, you need to learn about that if you're going to plan on doing any chasing, not for amateurs, never, never for amateurs, period, end of sentence, don't even challenge me on that one. Rest of the month of February, several meetings coming up. These are just the first four. There's about a baker's dozen of them that'll be held in the Mid-South area over the next several weeks. First one in Sumner, Mississippi, Tuesday, February 13th at the Emmett Till Interpretive Center at 6 p.m. Week later, Tuesday, February 20th in Wynn, Arkansas at the Fire Department on North Falls Boulevard. Two days later, Thursday, February 22nd at the Henderson County Emergency Operations Center in Lexington, Tennessee. And another one coming up Thursday, March 1st, Gibson County Emergency Operations Center in Trenton, Tennessee. Where's the one for Memphis and Shelby County? Not on this list yet. If you'd like to know more, go to the National Weather Service in Memphis on their page for a full listing of all the Skywarn sites, or you can go again to this website, and we'll have more details down underneath the forecast. So just scroll down a little bit, and you'll be able to see more about what we're showing out there. This is a great way to help your community. This is citizen science at its best. You don't need a PhD to participate in citizen science. You just need to be able to have a willing heart and a volunteer spirit to be able to do this. And all you do is, again, show up and take the course. You get a ton of information, including a phone number that you can use one of these things for to call the National Weather Service and say, I'm in Germantown. I see a rotating wall cloud. It's moving this direction. I also see baseball-sized hail damage reported here. The National Weather Service can use the information that you phone in and then help everybody else know a little bit more about what's coming that general direction. So your information, volunteered, keeping an eye on things, could save lives. So please consider taking one of these meetings. We'll update this throughout the next several days and weeks, and we'll keep you updated on this over the for the next several days at least to let you know more about what's going on. So thank you very much. Uh, good morning from Thailand. I have no idea how to pronounce your name, but thank you for joining us from the other side of the planet. And thanks to everybody else out there for joining us uh, for this morning and uh, continuing to see, again, everybody checking in from around the rest of the Mid-South. Rest of the forecast, again, one more peek at the forecast for the rest of the day. Numbers back in the mid to upper 40s for lunchtime, lower 50s for high temperatures later on this afternoon. So looking pretty quiet across much of the area. My forecast coming up between 8 to 10 a.m. with Bob and Josh on Talkback Live. So join us on AM 730 or listen in on their website, talkbacklivenetwork.org. And you can get excuse me more information about what goes on in the Mid-South when it comes to sports and all kinds of other things. And again, join me on all of my social media networks. Got plenty of updates between now and News Channel 3 Live at 9 on air. And then I'll have another update on my Facebook page coming up on News Channel 3's uh, online sites, again, coming up at about 10.30 this morning. So join me for an update there. And stay tuned for a lot more with Tim Simpson and Jim Jaggers coming up on the evening shows tonight. And we'll see if Todd Demers is going to be back tomorrow morning uh, with his forecast or mine. We'll see what goes on there coming up a little bit later. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, welcome and thanks to everybody for stopping on by for an update on our exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. More up to come throughout the rest of the day on News Channel 3 on air and online.